So Computex has officially started, but a few weeks ago, Intel actually invited us over at their offices in California uh, to check out some upcoming processors, 10 gen processors, codenamed Ice Lake. Now, I do want to be fully clear here. Ice Lake is only officially rolling out into lower powered notebooks and not the higher desktop platforms. Uh, so we're just gonna have to wait and see when the architecture fully goes into that platform. But for now, it's just 10 gen on lower powered notebooks and you'll only be able to see them available in October or November of this year. So without any further ado, let's talk about Ice Lake. But first, a quick message from our sponsor. The new Be Quiet Dark Rock Slim Cooler offers high physical clearance for any memory module thanks to its slim heatsink and the low profile 120mm airflow optimized fan, so you get great cooling, low noise, easy installation, and no issues for high profile RAM. Check it out below. Okay, so let's quickly talk about what exactly Ice Lake is, because if you look at the whole current state of Intel's processor lineup, especially on the notebook side, it gets a bit confusing because we're only starting to see companies roll out Whiskey Lake into the Ultrabooks and it's still gonna stay here for a really long time. Uh, and so Intel's gonna have a tough time rolling out these new Ice Lake processors in 2019. So uh, yeah, I guess it's just gonna cause a lot of confusion among consumers, but we're just gonna have to wait and see how this all plays out for the rest of 2019. Anyways, for the time being, Ice Lake will only be replacing Whiskey Lake CPUs in 10 and light notebooks. From a technical standpoint, Whiskey Lake architecture used the 8 gen core design, but Intel still managed to increase frequencies by a huge amount without sacrificing battery life. On the high performance gaming notebook side, there's Coffee Lake, which uses Intel's 9th generation, but that's not a space Ice Lake will play quite yet. Ice Lake is super important because this is actually Intel's biggest architecture shift in the last five years. That's mostly because they're finally able to shift away from the 14 nanometer manufacturing process and to a 10 nanometer node. Plus, many of the features and technologies will be cascaded down into upcoming CPUs for years to come. Without getting too far into the technical details, every single part of Ice Lake CPUs are new in some way. The Sunny Cove CPU cores are much more advanced than anything Skylake derivatives offered. Internal bandwidth and cache sizes have been overhauled too, so the processor can chew through tasks a lot more faster. Uh, meanwhile, the memory controller gets a new phase too with support for up to 64 gigabytes of DDR4 3200 speeds or 32 gigabytes of LP4 at 3733 megahertz, which is crazy. In terms of specs, this is all we really know right now. Uh, there will be a U and Y series models with up to four cores and eight threads, so essentially a carbon copy of Whiskey Lake setup. Much like Whiskey Lake, the TDP of these is configurable, but instead of ranging between 10 watts to 25 watts, the span will now be between 9 watts and 28 watts, with the most popular design likely hitting the 15 watt mark. L3 cache still remains at 8 megabytes, but secondary caches are much larger and faster, so don't take this number as a lack of improvement. Honestly, the most interesting spec here is probably the clock speeds. Ice Lake's max turbo frequency hits up to 4.1 GHz, which is much lower than the 4.8 GHz achieved by the i7-8665U. I'm guessing that Intel expects their architecture improvements to make up for the lower clock speeds, but this will be interesting to see. Finally, the graphics configuration is a bit of a question mark right now. Obviously, there's the new Gen 11 architecture, which we'll dive deeper into a separate video, and Intel's Iris name will come back with configurations up to 64 execution units. Uh, that's a huge jump from the current maximum of 24 on Whiskey Lake and even more than the 48 offered on older Iris Plus GPUs. The fact that this kind of graphics power is being added to lower powered notebook CPUs is pretty impressive, but we don't know how Gen 11 GPU specs will play out across the Ice Lake range uh, so don't assume those 64 core designs will hit lower price systems. Intel is also trying to push Thunderbolt 3, which is understandable since it's their own technology. Plus the USB 3 ecosystem is becoming extremely confusing and fractured lately with the new ridiculous USB 3.2 rebranding. To try and simplify, Thunderbolt is being added to next-gen notebooks and they've built a four port Thunderbolt controller directly into the Ice Lake core rather than being in a separate chip. But will that mean that more notebooks will be built with exclusively Thunderbolt 3 compatible Type-C ports? Not really, since it's up to manufacturers to implement it properly into their designs, and we all know how they love saving money by skimping on IO ports. But what does this all mean for performance? Well, Intel really didn't show off much in that respect, and they didn't even explain the final specs of their Ice Lake processor family, which is sort of odd. Before we even get into the charts, let's talk about the testing config Intel used. Every single CPU is Intel's legacy configurations that uses 15 watt TDP, which in this case of KB Lake R 
and this whiskey lake example means a quad core eight thread part using 16 gigabytes of ddr4 at 2400 megahertz in a dual channel config there's nothing really to complain about there the ice lake config runs pretty identical with 15 watts eight threads and 16 gigs of memory but that's being clocked at 3733 megahertz that might sound like a huge issue for comparisons, but this is LPDDR4, which means a reduced overall bandwidth. But the 1333 MHz speed delta between this and Whiskey Lake could still throw off the results by a bit. All right, so onto a few charts we have. This result shows that from an instructions per clock or IPC standpoint, Ice Lake will deliver on an average of 18% higher rates than Skylake cores. We see that SPEC 2016 and 2017 SysMark uh, Web, XP, RT, and Cinebench were used, but absolutely nothing allows us to align specific results or tests with the graph. It's also important to remember that higher instructions per clock doesn't necessarily translate into direct corresponding boosts in key applications. This next chart shows that well. Here, we have single threaded performance in a simpler integer calculation across 15 watt CPUs. It looks like the Ice Lake CPU achieves between 5-6% to better performance, but the result isn't as clear as it first looks. Since Intel clearly stated Ice Lake will run at lower speeds than Whiskey Lake, we could be seeing a higher clocked 8 gen CPU battling it out a technically lower powered or lower speed 10 gen processor. Since Intel clearly stated Ice Lake will run at lower speeds than Whiskey Lake, we could be seeing a higher clocked 8 gen CPU battling it out a technically lower speed 10 gen processor. If that's the case, this result is pretty impressive even with the higher speed memory taken into account. However, if both CPUs are hitting the same frequency, Ice Lake may end up being a small incremental improvement rather than a leap forward. Now this chart again shows two 15 watt configs, but with an Iris Pro integrated part alongside a previous gen UHD 620 graphics. On one hand, it's great to hear that Intel will be rolling out MX150 level graphics into their lower voltage processors, but we had several unanswered questions about this particular Iris Pro layout and the number of execution units it uses. The last thing that I want to touch base on is Intel's push towards Wi-Fi 6 Gig Plus because while it isn't new, I don't think it's a big selling feature yet. Remember, Wi-Fi 6 has been around since Whiskey Lake, but the number of compatible devices is minimal due to costs involved. Intel is trying to fix that issue with a newer module design, which should simplify router and PC designs but they're also adding the Gig Plus specification, which is yet another speed increase. The limiting factor of Gig Plus is that its speeds reach well above 1000 megabits per second, which is literally the limit of most people's in-house wired networks. This is very much geared towards enterprises that might be running 10G infrastructures, but in the future, it may apply to home users as well. So there you guys have it, yet more processors from Intel, and it looks like it's a pretty big step forward, uh, especially since they're moving away from the a 14 nanometer manufacturing process to a 10 nanometer uh, process. You also got the new architecture based off the Sunny Cove cores, as well as Gen 11 graphics and much more. So let me know what you guys think. Are you excited for these new processors? Let me know in the comments down below. I'm Ibar with Hardware Connects. Thank you so much for watching. Make sure to check out some relevant content over here. Subscribe to our channel or newer channel over here. Uh, that's Michael right over there. Dimitri is right over there as well. I'll see you in the next one.